Hello, everybody, and welcome to another speedrun commentary. This time on a Souls game I have never speedrun before, at least until now, Dark Souls 2, which I know is everybody's favorite Dark Souls game. I give this game a lot of flack as a joke. I actually really, really love Dark Souls 2. I love all the Souls games. Even if this is one of my least favorite Souls games, I still love all of them. So if you've never joined me for one of these speedrun commentaries before, I like to give a little walkthrough, kind of play-by-play -play of what I'm doing in the run, so that you can try it for yourself if you want to. So to start the run, you want to start your timer as soon as the cutscene ends, and then after your stamina bar runs out once, you want to take off all of your clothes because stamina regenerates faster depending on your weight in this game, and it actually does make a difference to take them off to this character creator even though you change your clothes right after. Um, Got to go ahead and put in your name. That character creation in this game counts, so you just want to put in the shortest name possible. You want to pick Bandit, Bandit, Bonfire Estic, and then you want to head out as fast as you possibly can. Take off those clothes again, as I mentioned. And one thing you'll notice that I'm doing here, which is kind of weird, is you want a two hand in your left hand. And the reason you want to do that is many actions in Dark Souls 2, if you take them with your, it's either your left or your right hand, I can't remember what, whether it's opposite or not. The point being, many of the actions you take in Dark Souls 2 will be done faster if you two-hand in your left hand. It's not that much faster, but it's a speed run and it adds up over time, because think about things like opening doors, bonfires, everything like that, it matters. Anyway, right here we're going to cut right, and then we're going to do a nice little jump down to the binoculars, because that's a little, uh, obviously a little shortcut than running all the way around. And one thing you'll notice, and if you've seen any of my speedrun commentaries on this game before, or the Souls games, that is, stamina management is a huge, huge, huge part of these runs, because in Dark Souls 2 in particular, you'll notice that if you run out of stamina entirely, there'll be like a three second buffer after you get it back before you can sprint again, and with this being a speedrun, you want to be able to sprint as much as possible. So you're gonna go around and pull the lever here. I put the dark sign in the third slot, the Estus in the 10th, and then I'm gonna drink the Estus to get my health back. The reasoning for putting things in different spots is you're gonna want them queued in certain orders. You can figure that out for yourself if you wanna put them in different orders, but I put them here for specific reasons. Notice otherwise that I talked to the Herald and then ran to the bonfire there. You talk to the Herald to get the Estus flask, so you just wanna tag her, which basically means press a to talk to her and then run away. And you want to light the bonfire because of course we're going to need to come back to Majula. You want to jump down there, get those items, and then we're going to run through the Forest of Fallen Giants. There are some spe specific things to look out for here. Um, being that guy right there, that dude can snipe you. So you got to be real careful to watch where his arrow is going because if he snipes you and gets shot in the head, it's not a fun time. Gonna climb up the ladder here, and then we gotta look at this guy on the right. We wanna watch what he does. If he aggros to you, you need to go kite and attack from him, meaning you need to go to his face, you need to bait and attack and get and then run away. Because as you notice right there, he comes up to the fog. If he runs to you and you ignore him, he will stop you from getting through that fog gate. For these two guys, you just wanna bait them to one side and then run to the other. Then we're gonna run up to the top up here. We're going to turn and then roll. We're doing that also to kite attacks that try not to get hit on this ladder. As you can see there, even though I was out of his reach, he still hits me. Thank you, Dark Souls 2. Uh, pain in the butt. Here, I want to equip the soul of the lost undead because we're going to need it to buy a firebomb. I want to light this here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to press A or X to call her and start doing it. And the moment you do that, you press square or X because that will allow you to use the soul while you're talking to her. So while I'm using that soul, I'm mashing X. Here, we're equipping that firebomb. The spot is pretty particular right there. This is gonna go really fast. In that spot, you need to look down. Looking down is key. You need to throw the firebomb. This is Pursuer Skip. Pursuer Skip, <laughs> again, this is gonna go really fast. What you need to do for Pursuer Skip is run up on that ledge you're probably gonna need to play it back. You'll notice that I jumped at the very last second over that little edge, and then when I turned around, I jumped on this little crease in the in the rock over. The moment I jumped over, I used a life jump immediately. That's for timing. And then after that, run straight to the bonfire. If you do that, what essentially happens is the pursuer is being spawned. You spawn him in, 
and as you rest at the bonfire, it resets the arena, and the bird that's carrying the pursuer drops the pursuer, and he dies. <laughs> and you get his soul in the Ring of Blades. It's pretty awesome. It's a cool trick, but uh, I would definitely look up Pursuer Skip on YouTube if you specifically want to do this, because I, I glazed over it really quickly. Um, and another thing I want to say is that fog gate. Fuck that fog gate, dude. You need to bait attacks from those uh, spear wielders. You'll notice that I ran really far past them and then rolled to the gate, because otherwise they'll poke you at that gate. Here you want to equip the Ring of Blades, you want to put Bones in slot 2, you want to put the Soul in slot 6, then we're going to two-hand the axe and go through the gate. When you enter, you're going to hit the giant four times right away, stand there for a second, which will kite this attack, then go around, make sure you have stamina for three hits, go for that leg, stamina for three hits, go for this leg. I only got two because I'm bad. <laughs> then you want to stay at the leg, do three, stay again, get stamina back for three, go to the other leg. I roll away because I see that he's doing his triple stomp, get enough back for three, go over here. I get bitch slapped, which is fucking great, <laughs> but I'm able to come back in and get the last two hits. Now this is very key. You want to start using the dark sign immediately as fast as possible here because what's going to happen is you'll see I use the dark sign there before the souls popped into my count. Because I use the dark sign so quickly, I will still get the giant souls. You can see I have 10,000 here and then we're going to buy the blacksmith's key leave and go to Majula. Yeah, the, that's a nice little trick that you can dark sign out before and still get the souls from the boss, but it is it is very particular. You have to do it very quickly. So you want to make sure you have the dark sign equipped. If the Herald is here, she might not always be, but hopefully she will be. You want to talk to her and then run away. Essentially, the reason we're doing this is the Herald, you need to talk to her four times before you're able to level up for the first time. And we already talked to her once, so if we talk to her two times here as we rest of the bonfire to get the blacksmith, then we're good. Same deal here as with the Soul of the Lost Undead. I'm going to press A to talk to him and then immediately X, and that will let me use the Soul of the Pursuer while I go through his dialogue, because NPCs in this game love to fucking hear themselves talk. You're buying a rapier, you're buying six Titanite shards, and then you're upgrading that rapier to plus three. I'm gonna switch the rapier here for a little trick. And then I'm going to put the soul of the last giant on because as we talk to the cat, we are going to do the same thing. X square, and then we are using the soul. Then I'm going to buy the cat ring. Then I'm going to buy two bones, and I'm going to buy two skulls. After that, I am going to make sure I have my life gems on. I'm going to equip the cat ring, roll down. Going to use one gem. Going to use one gem. Missed it. <laughs> like a dum dum. Now. What I want to do is sprint here. I did it really awkwardly. You can sprint across, be good, and then line yourself up here with this. Use the rapier to attack forward. That'll make sure you fall on it because if you break that, it never comes back in your playthrough. So if you, if you break it, it's a reset, unfortunately. Switch back to the axe here. We're going to do a running attack, R1, on this. Then do a jumping attack. And that will let you grab the items. You're going to see me run and jump here. You want to try to aim to get in this wall. If you miss it, you want to do this. You want to jump in front of that guy, because otherwise that guy will blow up and get you. Then you want to switch to the rapier, come down here. It can help to stab here, because what you're going to see, I should have stabbed with the rapier there, because if you do, you'll fall straight down, but instead I got caught by the ladder, which is dumb. But anyway, go down here, roll down. You can try to hit that ledge. If you do, you'll not take as much damage. No matter what, use the life gem here. And then you're going to run at a very specific angle you'll see right there. So you can land on that. If you do not land on that, it will take about 97% of your HP, which means you'll probably die. So you want to try to run. Make sure you're running. Then here, you can jump there to the left. I usually try to do it as best I can, but it didn't work that time. I like to fall down to the area to the right. Sometimes you get poisoned. If you do, you got to use two life gems immediately, and it'll be fine then. Run on the bridge, jump here. I noticed that I ran out of stamina here, so I needed to be careful. You want to make sure you get a good running start before you do this jump, otherwise you'll fall. But you jump right across, stab here, then we're going to go down here. This nice little safe strat. Roll here, roll back, auto roll, then you roll here. Don't roll again. <laughs> Panic rolling. Get the life gems, don't get fucked by that dude, and then come down here. So that's nice, you'll have 20 extra life gems over the course of the run. Um, it, it's it's a nice little safety cushion, because otherwise you only start with the 10 that, that the bandit automatically gets. Jump here, enter the mist. I'm going to equip the alluring skulls in slot 8, which is going to be useful for when I go in the DLC. 
So I usually run to this fourth one here. I stop for a second, get my stamina back. I run this path right here through the middle. Doesn't get me hit by any poison, any of those guys. I try to jump over these and get over that. I missed. Walk around this dude. Make sure you roll these because if you don't, they might hit you, stagger you. And if they do, you're going to be in for a world of hurt because that guy's going to grab you and it's going to be a problem. So I grab the bonfire and then now we are going to run down to the rotten. If you run wide to the left here, none of these will hit you, which is nice. So then we're going to go through the fog, and then we are going to do, honestly, what is probably one of the hardest fights in the run, uh, the Rotten, because you only have a plus three rapier, your stamina is really low, but the real scary thing here is your ADP is only three, so he can get some serious shitboxes on you. But what you're going to notice is I do not lock on to the Rotten, and the reason I don't lock on to the Rotten is I do not have the stamina here to really be dodging. So what I want to do, this attack and the attack that goes in the opposite direction, I want to kite as many of those as possible from afar, because if I do, I can just walk back and then sprint in. The worst things he can do are that attack where he holds his hand up and backs up because it's a waste of time, and the other worst attack is his slam down, because his slam downs come very quickly, which is very scary. You'll see that I'm trying to walk back here and kite something, and it just... It's just not happening for me. This ends up being a really bad rotten fight because the slam downs I have to roll away from. I really want him to do the spins, but when he does, I'm too close anyway. So this is a terrible example. Fortunately, well, or unfortunately, we'll be fighting the rotten a lot more. So you'll get a chance to see some good rotten fights. But watching this back in hindsight, I know I had like a 20, uh, 40 second time save here. And I think I only saved like seven seconds. And it's pretty apparent why. This is a fucking horrible rotten fight. But... It's, you, you gotta be safe here because Rotten can not one-shot you if you're full HP, I believe. I don't think there's any attacks that can. Maybe that energy slam down, but yeah, you just you just need to stay alive here, especially in earlier runs. Um, so you want to equip the Rotten Soul in slot 7 here, and then we're going to go to the DLC. I know it seems weird to go to the DLC in a speedrun, especially that this is any percent, which I haven't mentioned, by the way. If you don't know what an any percent run is, it is a run where you try to beat the game as fast as possible. So we're not trying to beat any specific amount of bosses. We just want to beat Dark Souls 2 as fast as possible. But the reason we go to the DLC is it is faster to go to the DLC and get the items we need, which are bonfire estics and the bright bugs, than it is to otherwise go get the four Lord Souls. And you'll see why later. And we also want to get Flynn's Ring, because Flynn's Ring is fucking OP, dude. Flynn's Ring is so good in this game. It is not quite as good in Dark Souls 3, but Flynn's Ring is absurdly good. Ring of Blades, Flynn's Ring. If we were doing the All Bosses run, we'd be getting Leo's Ring, I believe that's what it's called. The one you get from Old Dragon Slayer, and that adds more to the Rapier's counter damage, which the Rapier's counter damage is just absolutely filthy in this game. So I'm switching to the bow. You can actually do a jump there right before Sin wakes up. And if you do, you can avoid this whole little shake, which saves you about seven seconds. I don't do it because it's a you lose a run if you if you miss it. So I'm going to run right past the crystals here. I'm going to aim right at below that window and then I'm going to I'm going to do a back step and then I'm going to jump. That's a nice little skip. It saves a lot of time. But if you do happen to fall there, you'll fall down to a platform if you look up you can shoot the this thing to the right and you can just get up it loses you about 20 25 seconds but it's better than dying so try to make that jump it is a pretty difficult jump to make you want to jump at the last minute you want to make sure you're aiming you want to do the back step so you get a good run anyway here i'm going to go light the bonfire after using the soul I walk slowly off there. You can also stab off with the rapier. I just be careful there because if you walk too fast, you'll actually just fall off entirely, which is bad. Go on the bridge here. If you're too close to the fire, make sure you roll so you don't get fucked by it. <clears throat> After walking down here and jumping, and then we are going to move forward into the next area where we're going to do a little do a little sniping, do a little sniping on some switches, which is pretty useful. I, I never thought to do this before I did the speed run, but it's quite useful. Uh, because you need to hit the switch three times to be able to get through here. So you shoot an arrow there. I'm going to turn around and shoot an arrow here. And then I'm going to turn around, aim here. And once the switch comes up, I'm going to shoot it again. Now we're going to walk through here because we want the soul that drops from here and the dragon charms, which will be nice for later. I equip the soul in slot seven before I shoot this arrow because we're going to need to use it in the DLC. And I want it equipped. I shoot one last arrow there so that this turns. And as I do, I'm going to start running because we need to go through. 
And now we're gonna go get Flynn's ring. If you happen to know where it is, then you'll know where I'm going. Otherwise, just run down here to the left. I'm gonna drop down, try to turn to the left a little bit so that I can turn here and go up the stairs. Uh, it's pretty easy to walk past that guy just hanging on the left. And then we're gonna go up the stairs here and get Flynn's ring. Even if you never have any desire to speed run this game and you just had never had any idea where this ring is, go get it. It's fucking great. The only thing of note with Flynn's ring is if, if you don't know what it does, it gives you more attack power the lower your equip weight is. So you'll notice that I'm not really going to use any armor or anything in this game. This is a naked run boy. <laughs> so you get the most out of Flynn's ring possible. You want to look up as high as you can and throw that skull in that spot so it hits that bridge. It's very important because you don't want to get hit on this ladder. You do not want this mage paying attention to you. Unfortunately, they do here, but I listen for the attack and I time my roll there because it can shoot a magic shot at you, which at this HP would kill me. But it, instead, it did its little soma soming. soul homing mass, homing soul mass. Yes, uh, this was terrifying because you need to grab this bone and this guy tried to get fresh with me. Uh, but what I do is I grab the bone here and I try to pay attention to where they are and typically what I'll do is this spot I'll run around curl around the edge and then bonfire or er, bonfire bone bone to the bonfire I'm speaking super great today If you uh, do the bone at about halfway through the bone animation you're safe But what's also nice is most of their swings will go over your head. So that's pretty sweet uh, You're back to the bonfire if your health is really low you might want to rest of the bonfire I decide here that I'm just gonna use a life gem we're gonna want to run down here I'm gonna pop the gem this time there's gonna be no sin to kill these guys so what you want to do when you see this right here you want to start walking at that spot hug the left they should do this attack you want to roll to the left as that happens instead of face tanking their fucking attacks like I did but that's the attack you want to see because that means you'll be able to roll through the middle of what they're doing which is nice same thing here is talking to the merchants I'm gonna press X and then I'm gonna press square immediately to use the soul after that, I'm going to throw the skull because that'll stop the mages from killing me here. And it will stop the dudes who are on the bridge from completely following me in. Which allows me to go up here because we have one area left to go. As I mentioned before, we wanted to get Flynn's ring. We needed the key to get here because this is where we're going to get the bright bugs and the bonfire estics, which are extremely, extremely, extremely important in the run. Bonfire estics, for those who might not know, allow you to turn one single bonfire to new game plus and the bright bugs give you a damage buff while also taking less damage it's fuck they're they're op but there's very limited amounts in the game so what i'm gonna do here make sure my stamina is back i have to lay on the bonfire just sprint straight into that hole and you'll fall down into this area you can heal with estus if you get hit by that guy's little magic thing you can heal with life gems and then bone back and the reason we do this is because we don't want the invader there we need to be able to um, get through here safely and now we're going to run through to this area and I guess you know technically the reason you run down there is because if you ran through here the invader would still be there and you couldn't bone but when you go down into that area the invader leaves which is convenient uh, then we're gonna run down here you're gonna curve to the left here and you're gonna curve left as you drop because we're gonna want to go into this area over here this is where we're gonna pick up our bright bugs then we're gonna run back here you want to try to line up so you're lined up with this pillar because you don't want that guy with the arrow to shoot you and stun you. Run past, grab this, and then immediately use your homeward bone. Nine times out of ten, I never get attacked here if I do that. It always seems to work okay. If you do, you can roll around and try to go to a different little hidey hole and get away, but typically I'm, I'm pretty good there. So now we're, now we're finally done in the DLC. We don't got to do anything else left here, thank God, because enemies do such high damage here. It's scary. Um, we got what we needed now. We're going to the Cardinal Tower because we have a couple of things we need to buy You want to buy a Cestus you want to buy three bright bugs and what I do is I buy a effigy here um, You can actually buy more if you want to the thing is it's a little bit slow because we do need souls for other things here That's why this this part of the run scary because you can't die at all once you've spent the souls here It gets a little less scary because deaths become a little less uh, problematic other than losing time of course but early runs, that doesn't matter so much. So we're going to level 14 Vigor, 27 Endurance, and 8 ADP. Clap, clap, clap. We're actually getting more ADP. Yay! <laughs> Even though, if I'm not mistaken, you need 26 ADP to have Dark Souls 1 iframes. This game is disgusting about ADP. 
So we're gonna upgrade that again 14 27 8 on vigor endurance and adp and then we're gonna go get our rapier upgraded to plus four which is the last time we will upgrade any weapon in the run so yes we're gonna finish dark souls <laughs> dark souls 2 with our highest weapon being a plus four in a speed run it's pretty cool the damage buffs here are insane so there i equipped the covetous silver ring in slot one and i equip the um flynn's ring in slot four and then we're gonna run forward here into this area, which is why we got a fragrant branch of yore earlier. I don't even remember when we got that, to be honest. I think we picked it up with some other shit. It's fine, you have one. If you did everything I did, you have one. Uh, and then we're gonna go pick up the life gems, homeward bones, because it's a little extra gems, which is nice, but particularly we're picking them up for the homeward bones, which we're gonna need in the upcoming splits. Get this lady out of the way, pull this lever, and then we're gonna do uh, a little serpentine, little jukes, because you need to wait for that door behind you to open. Uh, so really, it, it's not that hard. I think I've only ever died here once in any run, which as you can see, I've done 92 runs up there, so I've done a lot. Uh, resets are not uncommon in this run, at least for me. Run through there, stab that guy in the face. If you stand up here, nothing can get you, so get the bone and the bright bug, and actually I lied. They will not come up here, but the little frog face, he will come up here. He's He will try to get fresh with you, so it, it is nice if you can kill him, but I really wouldn't worry about it. I have I think I've only ever died at that door once, again, out of 92 runs. It's pretty funny. I didn't reset too many times to the same exact things. This run has just a ton of minor things that can go wrong that can cause you to reset, so... My original goal for running this was actually to get a sub one hour. I wanted to, I wanted to make that sweet YouTube title of... Uh, how to beat Dark Souls 2 in under one hour, but I did so many runs of this game and it, it, it just got frustrating at a certain point to be honest because the, the resets are rough kind of like Dark Souls 1 where I was resetting to not getting the Black Knight Halberd a ton uh, Because of its low drop rate well here same story except it's not RNG. It's just me fucking up or the game fucking me uh, which they happen in equal turn Anyway, light the bonfire there after running through. You wanna hug this left wall as much as possible because you don't wanna kite any attention because we need to get th through this guy's whole dialogue. And let me just take this moment to say, NPCs in this game talk so fucking much, dude. Like, Jesus, you gotta be kidding me. I know people like the lore and everything and I'm not saying I don't, but fuck. Anyway, you wanna be able to get 12 here, ideally. When I buy the one effigy, sometimes I think an enemy doesn't die and I'm only able to get 11. If you don't get 11, this is why buying more effigies is slower. You will actually have to come back here at some point and buy more resin, which is obviously not fast because you, you gotta go like 45 seconds out of your way. But in earlier runs, safety strats like that are totally fine. You wanna have effigies and you'll see why here in a minute. So after we get that, you dark sign out, and then we're gonna come here and grab the red tear stone ring, which we will be using, and then we're gonna dark sign out again, which is the end of the red lightning tear split. As you can see, I call it lightning and red tear stone. I'm so fucking funny. Anyway, go to, <laughs> go to the bonfire, go to Black Gulch, and now we are going to do the rotten gauntlet. I mentioned to you that we'd be fighting the rotten again, and we are going to fight him again. Four times. We're gonna fight the Rotten four more times. So use the Bonfire Essick. And the reason we're gonna fight him four times, if you don't know, the door that opens to Dranglet Castle, the gate, will either open for four Lord Souls, or it will open if you have a million soul memory. So by fighting the Rotten here, we're gonna get a million soul memory. I go ahead and equip the uh, the Red Tear Stone Ring over the Cat Ring. You wanna walk down, get hit by that, roll through, get hit by that poison, and if you notice, I kite that poison and sit in it and use my Bright Bug immediately. That will stun me out of the animation right after I use it. Get the resin, which I put in slot seven, by the way, while I was grabbing the Red Tear Stone Ring. Glazed over that. And now let the gauntlet begin. Hitting by the poison here and using a Bright Bug. If you don't use a Bright Bug, you'll die, which is why we have Bright Bugs. And of course, to buff, buff our damage. You can see right there that I get the perfect amount for Red Tear Stone Ring. And now this fight is a good bit easier, not only because obviously I'm doing a fuck ton more damage, but also I have way more stamina, which means I can dodge these attacks without really having to worry. I can attack a lot more times. But as you can see here, I'm not really dodging a lot of the time. I mean, that's a lie. I am if I'm too close and being too greedy. But here, like if I see his fist attack, I'm not doing that, which fun fact, you can knock those off. It's pretty cool. Run away from that attack, it has pretty um, pretty measly range, actually. And then here, we need to share this Bright Bug. 
so the moment you kill the first rotten you're going to use lightning resin again and then hopefully not get hit by any poison usually this path doesn't get me hit by any poison but there I'm a dum dum uh, if you get by two poisons you're gonna die so don't do that come back here burn the estic and then we're immediately going to go back down and fight another rotten. This is because we only have enough bright bugs here to use three for the rotten. So we want to share the first two since they're the fastest two to kill since it's new game plus one and two. So when we go down here, I'm going to do the same thing. Block with your rapier and that will usually happen. Unlike last time when I got headshot like a dum-dum. Uh, and then we're going to go fight the rotten again. And it's really the same thing. I'm, I'm just going to try my best to kite different attacks. He can do a giant slam down there if you run forward, which is typically what I want. Um, I don't really want any other attacks because he takes forever to walk to you. These are just, other than his holding his hand up, which is just pure, this shit is pure blank a time waste. Because if you attack him, he might decide to attack quickly. So you just have to be careful there, which is why I don't attack. Um, I think I did notice here, actually. I didn't notice this. See, there you go. Finally, I walked out of its range. Very nice. You'll notice that if he does the hand attack, I'll sometimes walk really far away because it's a waste of time. This is actually his best attack. Fun fact. If you're able to walk around it, you can get four hits in there. I just didn't do it because I'm a coward. Uh, anyway, see? Slightly walk away. Don't waste any stamina. And then I know I'll be able to come in here and get four hits. The thing is, I know because I've done the rotten so many times how many hits I can get in after certain attacks. Because there is a, essentially, you could call it cooldown after certain attacks that he won't do an attack again. It's it's just so much practice. I, I've over the course of these many many runs, I've fought the rotten so many fucking times <laughs> that I feel like I could do it in my sleep at this point. Anyway, we're gonna go through here. You don't have a, have the thing anymore, so we're gonna do the same thing. Block that, roll that, kite that, bright bug that, run down, resin that rapier, and then we're gonna go in to fight the new game plus three rotten. I got two more left. And it's going to be the same deal. The only obvious difference is the Rotten is getting stronger and we are needing to do more damage every time. Uh, it's really not that much of a damage difference. I mean, ob obviously, it's not the same as New Game Plus One Rotten. It, do it does increase quite a bit. But now that we don't have to worry about sharing the Bright Bug, it's not too bad because we'll definitely have the Bright Bug the whole time. If you could tell, the last fight actually ran out of the Bright Bug, unfortunately, um, which, which is not great. I say he does more damage, but it really doesn't matter because you can't get hit here because a fucking swat of a bee's dick could kill you at this point. Same deal though, it's it's just running away from his attacks. You, you don't want the slam downs. If you do, you gotta make sure you roll them. And particularly the reason I don't like the slam downs here, they're really annoying in the first rotten fight because you don't have that much stamina, but they're annoying in this fight only because even with 8 ADP, I sometimes, even when those attacks are not even touching the player character, I'll still get hit by them. There's just, this game just has bad, bad, bad hitboxes sometimes. And every game in the Soul series does, don't get me wrong. Every single game in this series does, but fuck me if Dark Souls 2 doesn't have some shitty hitboxes. I actually did a run after this one and I got here with the same speed. Um, to try to get that sub one hour, I tried a couple more runs after this, and I got killed by the Rotten slamming his fist, and I was a good maybe two feet away from the fist, and he killed me. So, yeah. Anyway, one last time. Give me a moment. I'm going to drink some tea here. <sighs> Thank you. Sorry if I sound a little, a little funny. I have really terrible allergies right now. When I recorded the Code Vein video, I was trying my best to make it sound like I, my nose wasn't stuffed to hell, so hopefully it didn't. Uh, same shit here. There, See, like there, I knew I was too close to the fist, so I knew I needed to roll. On that attack, when he slams down twice, I always try to like not run too far away. That way I can get back in and attack. Just to note with the slam down there, that's the long slam down. He'll sometimes do that in the opener. It's really nice when he does because you can just run backward and then you're pretty good. This kind of scared me. I don't like being behind him because he can turn really quickly. And as you saw there, he can also hit your body when you turn with your um, with his body. And he can actually push you into the fire if you're in the wrong spot. So, note. But nicely, we are able to get through him here. And that's the end of the Rotten Gauntlet. So instead of going to kill all the different lords, instead of killing um, Freya and... Wow. Wow. 
Uh, the one with the face, the one who, who the one who's penitent in the dark, and you gotta light the torches, and... Oh, God, I don't even remember who the other lord is. I'm fucking awful. <laughs> I don't remember... Oh, shit, Old Iron King. Oh, my God. Anyway, that was what we got the homeward bones for. I didn't note that. You want a homeward bone after the, uh... The second, third, and fourth rotten. That way we keep the souls. Then we're gonna use all eight of the souls we got from him there you get extra souls in new game plus the like old king souls or like old dead souls or something like that use all of them and then we're gonna get 18 vigor 49 endurance 40 dex 40 strength and 10 adp that is our ending adp ladies and gentlemen that is not a lot of adp still um but obviously we are fucking statted out for only having killed well we killed last giant technically killed pursuer and we've killed the rotten five times <laughs> So, technically, we've killed seven bosses, but we've only actually fought six, and we are now, I think, like, level 100-something? I, I don't remember. I think it's, like, 120 to 140. Fucking absurd. Anywho, after you level up, you want to travel to the Rune Fork Road, and now we are going to make our way to Dranglet Castle. I tried to equip my bow in the right spot there, but I fucked up. You want to have the bow in your right hand here, and that's because we're going to use it for the Dragon Rider, for a specific, uh specific strat which is pretty nice and then i also want to get cat ring equipped here but i didn't really menu the way i wanted to so right here i'm gonna go um what i figured out is the last time you need souls you don't ever need souls again in this run so it actually makes more sense to equip it over the covetous ring so i go back here and put red tear sing red tear stone ring over the covetous ring and what we'll do later in the run is when we get king's ring we'll equip that over the cat ring because we won't need the cat ring anymore at that point it's a nice little, uh, little bit that you can do. So while we're running to Dranglick, which really isn't complicated at all, it's just running, I want to mention that for the rest of the run, you can use Red Tear Stone Ring for every single boss, and it will save you a bit of time. However, obviously it's more dangerous, not only because if the boss hits you, you die, but many times you need to get Red Tear Stone Ring far before you get to the boss, which means you have a chance to die throughout the level. So I decide not to do it. If you want to go for better times, you will eventually want to use Red Tear Stone Ring on other bosses to make a difference in time. But I decided not to in this run because I was so adamant that I wanted to get a really nice run to upload to YouTube where there were very minimal mistakes. Um, so I decided not to do Red Tear Stone Ring again. You can definitely do that later. So here I'm going to run up the top of the stairs and if I'm smart I should block about at this point Be yep. because this guy can shoot you and hit you in the head and you don't want that. You want to hit him one time only because you don't want to kill him. You want to wait for him to come back over here then kill him. Then you want to not get hit but get hit anyway. Run over, hit that guy twice, he will die. Now you want to run over to this side here, try to kill these guys but probably don't stand where I stood there because you can see the, the mammoths are coming and you don't want to, you do not want to tango with the mammoths. Kill these guys. If you wanted to get Red Tear Stone Ring, this is where you would do it. And that's why I say it's a little scary, because you would need to run through the entirety of Dranglick with Red Tear Stone Ring, meaning if you got hit by anything, you would die. Usually I don't get hit throughout Dranglick. I'm pretty sure in this run that I do. So I would in in that case, I would have lost this run and would have just had to reset. And that and that's the nature of speedrunning, to be fair. You do just die sometimes and have to do it over again. Speedrunning is very much repetition, getting better through that repetition until you're able to string together a run that's really good uh, and you get progressively better over time, which is nice. But yeah, I, w I wanted this I wanted this PB, dude. I could smell it. Like My sum of best is nine minutes lower than my PB, as you can see at the bottom, so I, I wanted it. Anyway, you equip the Cestus at the door because we're going to punch this dude three times. It's a lot better than the Rapier for these guys. Uh, you want to kite an attack from this guy because did you see the insane level of swiggity swooty that dude had? He followed me so fucking well. It's ridiculous. But if you stand in front of him and then just roll away from his attack and kite an attack, then he'll leave you alone, which is nice. Anyway, I light the bonfire there and I'm switching back to the rapier because it's what we're going to use to fight the dragon rider. And then I'm going to run through here and I'm going to grab these items because we will want the... Uh, one well, of the Radiant Life Gems, I think, is what we use from that pile of stuff. It, you click through it pretty quick, so I didn't see, actually, uh, what's there. You know, I should mention, too, that this is the original version of Dark Souls 2. I, I don't, I, I feel like that's apparent, but it's probably worth saying. Uh, the Scholar version is different, and the primary difference in the Scholar version is you do not get the DLC items just by creating a character. 
but anyway, but you need to roll through that room kind of the way I did diagonally. And then you want to run to the right side here and then roll uh, to his left and run around him. I fucked it up completely there. <laughs> so obviously I would have died there. Now I could have been ballsy as fuck. I'm mean, like, you know what? I have red tear stone ring. YOLO boys, let's do dragon rider. Um, but embarrassingly, I'm so greedy a dragon rider that I get hit by him sometimes. So <laughs> I honestly should practice dragon rider because you don't even need to dodge dragon rider you can just run around like you can just strafe around him and kill him but I, I haven't practiced it anyway the reason we have the bow in the other hand is we want to two-hand the bow here we're gonna switch to the other guy l1 and then you'll be able to pop him and then we're gonna run just right around him go for him running attack and it takes four attacks one running attack three r1s he's dead and now see i tried to strafe him there but i'm I, i'm unlocked I think you can't do it unless you're unlocked on most attacks. I think you actually need to be able to like move quick more quickly. Um, there I decided to just use as many R1s as possible and face tank his moves. Because I know I am almost dead, but then he fucking turtles. And this is why Red Tear Stone Ring is nice, because you kill him way faster and you don't risk him turtling on you. But, oh well. I probably lose 10 to 15 seconds over what a Red Tear Stone, like a perfect Red Tear Stone Ring would be able to do there, so. It's not ideal, but I like to live. And I I proudly say that I've never lost a run to Twin Dragon Riders. <laughs> I've lost a run to a lot of shit in this game, but I've never died to Twin Dragon Riders, so I'm going to I'm going to keep that in my egotistical back pocket. Thank you very much. Anyway, I equip the Cestus here again and uh, light the bonfire down there. We're going to climb up this ladder, open this door. We're going to run to the guy on the back left, and we're going to punch the shit out of him. I believe it's three punches. One, two, three. Then we want to kite an attack from this guy. Make sure you kite an attack from that guy, because if you do not, he will hit you while you open this door and prevent you from opening it, and then you are dead, and your run is also not really dead because you, the fire's not that far away. But it might be if you have a really good time, so careful. Anyway, we want to run all the way around here because we don't want to kite these guys' attention before we get to them. Uh, then we want to just run through this guy's back door and open the door as fast as possible. You want to open it as fast as possible because they can stop you from opening the door. It's only happened to me once, but it's scary when it does. We want to run up here. Now, if we didn't have Cat Ring on here, we could jump here and we would actually be able to get Red Tear Stone Ring for the Mirror Knight, but I'm not going to do that because, again, I'm a coward. So... We're just going to run straight through here. We're going to run back, and we're going to go up the longest elevator of all time. Really, it is the longest elevator of all time. Except in Code Vein, funny enough. Uh, obviously, I won't spoil anything here, but toward the end of the game, there is an elevator where you go downward, and holy shit, I think it's a loading screen because that elevator is like a minute long or longer. It's so long. I don't know why it's so long. Uh, but anywho, we're going up here because we need to grab uh, the item that's in the chest, which... I think is the key that lets you through that door down there I think I actually don't know what it is I just grab it every time because I know that I need to I, I don't actually know what's in there and then after we're gonna dark sign this is what I mean about not needing souls we're just gonna keep using the dark sign here because we don't have more homeward bones and we don't technically need more levels anyway obviously bitch figure would be nice uh, but since you're supposed to be using the red tear sun ring you don't need more vigor and you don't need it anyway I just want it <laughs> Because yet again, I'm a coward. I want more HP, damn it. Uh, what is it? Okay, key to King's Passage. This is what I thought. I mean, that makes sense. They, you gotta go, it makes sense that you have to go through the entire level. You can't just immediately go in uh, the King's Passage and fight the Mirror Knight. Now, awesome. In an awesome twist, we're going to fight the Mirror Knight with an unupgraded Cestus. And there's a, I, I don't know why it does so much damage. I, I couldn't tell you. I, I imagine a plus 10 Cestus would fucking tear through his asshole so fast you couldn't blink, but I don't know, man. The unfortunate thing is, uh, this is gonna be the one fuck up in the run, and this fuck up was actually enough to stop me from getting the sub one hour, which is really disappointing. Uh, you notice I take the bow out here, and the reason I do only is because I'm doing that left hand thing to get through the gate fast, as a reminder. You want to run to the crack right there. You want to use the lightning resin. Now, what you want to do is kite an attack from him and then back up far enough that you don't use it. Now, what I do here is fuck up the strat. And apparently, it slowed down my video. The thunder of the gods. Um, because the reason here is there's a specific set of attacks we want to kite from him. And I didn't manage to do it there. Now, what I should have done 
because I don't use red tear stone ring typically, I should have healed. I should have just, point blank, I should have just healed uh, and tried to get the rhythm going again, which is what I was trying to do there. I was trying to get up under his hip and get the rhythm going, which you'll see here because I do it successfully on this next attempt. Um, but I wasn't able to do it. I should have healed because I could have healed and gotten the fight a lot better. And in speedrunning, it's always better to lose 20 seconds to healing, fucking up a strategy than it is to lose. I rolled around there for 20 seconds like a dipshit, and then now I'm going to lose another minute because I have to run back and do this all over again. So not the biggest time loss, but enough that it made a difference and definitely disappointing because I'm going to lose all the time that I've saved up to this point. So now you'll see what you're supposed to do. Go through here, light this on the crack, kite and attack. I'm gonna get hit again, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but you wanna move forward, and what you wanna do is attack four times, or and I attack three to be safe here. Maybe it is just three if you're not. You know what, I bet I, it is usually four, but it's three because I got hit. Anyway, what you do, you just move around the back, and then as he does the lightning attack, you move to his butt, and then you go back to his hip. It's really important that you go back to his hip because this dude has a fat fucking ass. The mirror knight is thick. And if you do not go to his hip, sometimes his butt will push you away. It's really important that he turns to you because if you're sitting at his hip when he turns, he will do the lightning attack again and he'll just do it forever. So to recap, you want to start the fight, kite and attack, hit him four times, move to the booty, move to the hip. Hit him seven times. Move to the booty. Move to the hit. Hit him seven times. Ad nauseum until he's dead. If you do it with the red tear stone ring, it only takes uh, two cycles of him doing it. But I think without it, it takes three. So it is slower. Anyway, on here, we're going to want to equip the radiant life gems in slot nine. We are going to unequip the bow. We are going to re-equip the rapier. That's the only time um, that we use the Cestus in the run uh, in Dranglet Castle and against Mirror Knight. So now we have the rapier equipped again. You want to make sure cat ring is on here. It should be if you equip things the way I did. So normally you wouldn't grab this bonfire, but I decided after this, I knew I wasn't going to get the sub one hour. I started securing the PB essentially by getting a, a fire here because I'm my PB here is not good at all. So I knew that it, even if I died in a mana, I could still get it. You want to jump over, use a life gem here. And then we're going to head over here. And there's a nice little trick here that I never knew about until I speed ran. So if you stay here and never go on land, the people that are on land will not kite to you until you've passed them, if you stay in the water. You can see here they don't even notice you until I pass them. Very, very useful, because if you kite all three and have them run towards you, it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Because you need to be able to get through this gate, and they are fast, and they can stop you from doing it, so you want to make sure you're not kiting them and moving as fast as possible. Amana is absolutely one of the hardest parts of this run. It is one of the most annoying parts of this run. Uh, it's just awful. Want to go through here, move around this chick. If you need to heal, this is a good spot to do it right behind her. Uh, like I do there. Want to run through here, cut to the right. Keep an eye out for the magic that is homing to you so fucking well. As you can see, I turn my camera there to make sure. I actually like to kill this mage. I unfortunately get hit by it. <laughs> So I have to heal, and you need to watch because the right one's already going to be shooting at you. But if I, I get through there okay, and then I'm going to jump here, and then we're going to have to walk this and hug this left wall while dealing with the mage shooting from behind. I want to be clear that I actually don't hate the Shrine of Amana. It is a little bit annoying, but in a normal playthrough when you're not running through, this area isn't so bad. It's, it's a little shitty. The homing magic is a little too homing. Um, there's definitely some shitty things about it, but this area only sucks a speed run through. This is the worst part of it. So what you need to do here, you want to run across as this mage is casting. You want to roll over to the right as I do there and then immediately head toward the gate and absolutely 100% make sure you have your left hand two-handed here because you need to get through that gate quickly. Now again, for safety, I'm going to grab this bonfire here. Then I'm going to unequip Flynn's ring because you do not want to have it on. If you do have Flynn's ring on here, they will destroy it, these little acid things. So I'm going to make sure you have it off then kill this. The heartbreaking thing is that as I'm watching this back, I'm realizing that if I hadn't grabbed these safety bonfires, I may very well have gotten the sub one hour. I did these to be safe to secure the PB, but if I had been full balls, then I think I would have gotten the sub one hour, which is pretty disappointing because these aren't the only safety bonfires I grabbed, but it is what it is. I, I ran this game a lot and I, I tried my best and I don't feel, I don't feel bad about being able to beat this game in just over an hour. Um, anyway, 
run through here watch for their attacks as you saw I used the bright bug there in an area that was safe um, which helps you not get hit but you also want it for the demon of song I'm healing here with Estus to be safe again these are things I wouldn't need to do if I was going full balls so I, I do think it added up over time I'm sorry I'm commiserating my own my own cowardice anyway run forward here after using light and resin if you run quickly enough you can get a running r1 there and then this fight can be scary or easy depending on what you get i get a very nice fight here very lucky rng that attack can continue to be a five piece combo getting a getting a two piece is easy because all you have to do is step to the step to the right same with this this is his best attack that i'm about to get this grab all you have to do is just walk to the right until it's over like that and then plenty of attacks to the face very very nice fight that's the best other than the jump back that's pretty much the best rng that i could hope for uh it made for a very quick fight which i think is gonna allow me to get a gold on this split which uh for those who might be unfamiliar a gold split means it's the fastest time i've ever completed that segment so the t from the time i split a good fisting to the time i split bless rng um that will be the fastest i've ever completed that single segment which means i grab safety bonfires there and I was pretty slow at unequipping Flynn's Ring and everything like that. I should have done it earlier. So I could have done that split a lot faster, which uh, means I could just do my run overall faster. If I was willing to continue doing this run, I, I could definitely get a sub one hour with enough attempts. But uh, it just wore on me over time. This, this run is... It, it, you won't see it in this single run because I don't die as much. I only die... Um, spoiler alert, the one time. I only died a Mirror Knight, thank God. But... It, there were so many so many resets anyone who watched my stream which uh if you haven't maybe you should but if if you saw it you know how many times i reset this run particularly in the first three splits i died to a lot of things in the first three splits too many too many resets anyway you want to use the dragon charm again to get all your health back there you want to unequip the rapier because we're not going to be using it again in the run and then we want to equip the bow in the second slot because you're going to need it for a trick coming up interestingly you get to sort of the shit up you get to use the Keyblade for the rest of the run. The unupgraded Key of the Embedded is the final weapon for this run. I, I like that about this run a lot. I obviously like the Rapier. I enjoy using it because I think the counter damage is hilarious. But it's nice to use something other than that <laughs> in this run. I believe the All Bosses run uses the Rapier and the Red Iron Windblade, which, um, yeah, I don't know. Yet again, to complain about my cowardice this is not what you're supposed to do here you immediately just run through this area but i decide not only to grab the bonfire but i grabbed the lever shortcut too which point blank wasted like at least 25 seconds and between that grabbing the amana stuff the flynn's ring ugh. <laughs> it's fine because it's the choices i made so you want to get the bow here what you're gonna do walk up here this is a nice trick for any run shoot just slightly above the line the right line of that guy's shield and it'll turn him around and then you can just easily run through which is really nice i'm sorry if you can hear beeping i can't stop the recording uh, mid doing this but i live right near a back area like a loading dock where shit beeps all the time i can't tell you how many time i'm recording youtube videos and that shit goes off and i have to stop so hopefully you can't hear it too badly um anyway you want to go through here equip the key of the embedded you don't need to grab that shortcut it's a safety strat Grab the key of the embedded, use the lightning resin, get bright bug ready to go. And then this is the second worst part of the run after the Imana fog gate. This is the uh, Velstat fuck gate. You want to run through the middle here. You want to loop here, but I did not go up far enough there to do it. You loop there and then you'll kite attacks from them and then you can run to the right and go through. I got lucky that they both did the stabs forward because that's their longest attack. If they had not done that, I would not have gotten through that gate. So... I'm just gonna count my lucky stars that the game was nice to me there. Now we're gonna fight Velstat. Velstat can do quite a bit of damage to you, which is very scary. The Bright Bug definitely helps. I get lucky here because he does extremely easy attacks to deal with. Um, but you never wanna do more than two attacks. The Key of the Embedded is doing nice damage here, but if you do more than two attacks, the commitment to doing attacks with this thing is just so great. Um, I was a little greedy there. I thought I had enough stamina to go for a final hit, but I did not. Uh, fortunately, I didn't choke, and I was able to roll the slam down and get the last hit. Um, and then we're going to go through here. We're going to grab the King's Ring, and then we're going to Dark Sign out. And then I think I also get a gold on this split as well, 
which considering I lost about 25 seconds to getting the shortcut, goddamn, I could save some time on this spot. <laughs> but hey, I saved 20 seconds, so pretty, pretty nice. Now we are going to, I'm gonna use an effigy. I, again, I probably shouldn't, I don't need an effigy here. I only had lost 5% of my HP, so there's really no reason to use an effigy because I'm not doing red tier stone ring setups. And even if I was, that's not enough HP loss to make a difference anymore. Uh, the rotten poison one is the only one where it would make a difference. You can't, uh, you, you have to be human there to get the HP because as you saw, my HP was very low. And then this is another area where I lost time where I could have probably circumvented this. As I mentioned before, you need 12 resin in this run. I decide to go buy more. What I probably should have done, because it probably would have cost me less time, was just not use resin on my weapon for a boss. But I decide not to. I go here, I use a soul, and I buy enough resin that I'll have enough for the rest of the run. I'll stop complaining about it. If I had not done these things, I definitely would have gotten the sub one hour, so it's disappointing, but it is what it is. So I buy the resin, I dark sign back. I did it here because I this is the least costly it could be because I was already coming to Ruin Fork Road. It'd be way worse later in the run if I had to come back here specifically to do that, which adds travel time. It was actually a like swing of the moment decision. I didn't even think about it until I got here and then I was like, shit, I guess I should go buy resin, shouldn't I? Um, I shouldn't have. Anyway, equip the King's Ring over the Cat Ring, yeah. Do I even have cat ring on? Or I think I already did that. I guess I guess I already did it while I wasn't paying attention. So yeah, I have cat, have king's ring over cat ring equipped, which is nice because you never have to take it off. And if you have it equipped, every time you go up to these doors, you won't have to be swapping your shit. You'll just have king's ring on, which is nice. Then we're just gonna run through Aldia's keep, all the way to the guardian dragon, which uh, is another safe thing I'm gonna do. The guardian dragon red tear stone ring setup is really easy and really safe, but Obviously, if I use Red Tear Stone Ring, I would have the potential to get one shot by the Guardian Dragon. And interestingly enough, I get such good RNG on the Guardian Dragon that I would have killed it faster with Red Tear Stone Ring, but I get so lucky that I'm actually able to kill it fast anyway. So it didn't matter, kind of. Uh, run through here, jump over that, because sometimes it can block you. Try to go to the right here, because sometimes that can block you as well. And then we're gonna need to, need to do a little skip here which is jump, uh, you're gonna wanna jump on this. It's hard to do in the screen shaking, but basically if you run against that bone and jump, it'll push you to the stairs over there. Once again, I apologize for the beeping, if you can hear it. I don't know why it's beeping. I, it blows my mind back there. There's so, there's so many sounds that come out of that alleyway. I don't, I don't know what the fuck people do back there, but it's loud. Anyway, run through here, and then as I run out of stamina, I'm gonna equip the key of the embedded, because we're using to fight the Guardian Dragon. So you're gonna want to run to the right. You can see that ogre just fucking waiting. Run to the right, he'll go past. You wanna open this door. Then if you wanted to get red to your stone ring here, what you would do is you would stand in front of this door and use your resin. I'm gonna stand to the side instead. What would happen is the hippo would hit you, and when the hippo hits you, you'll get red to your stone ring set up. And you just run around him, and you're good. So we're gonna go through here, and then this actually is pretty specific. So see where I line my foot up here? You see that little grating on the ground? I line my foot up on that grating, and you have to start attacking as soon as his head moves over. You'll get three hits there, and then you'll guaranteed, as, at least in my experience, as long as you sat, sat in the right spot, you always get the bite, which lets you come down here. Now that doesn't guarantee he's gonna do stomps. I got lucky that he did not only one, but two stomps. And obviously I just YOLO'd there. I used my stamina and ran out, because I, I knew I could take a stomp from him. But a lot of times they'll fly away. This this boss can really be a dick in your run. The reason I have so much time to save here, even though I went to go get resin on this split, which I normally would not do, was because the Guardian Dragon was so shitty in my previous PB. He flew around for like a minute. <laughs> and obviously if he's flying around, there's nothing I can do. I can't make him come to the ground, so. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you're gonna want to take off the key of the embedded there, and you want to use a dragon charm to get your HP back, especially if you use red tear stone ring, because you'd be really low on HP. And then we're just gonna take this yet again long elevator up to the dragon airy. It's called dragon airy, right? I know part of it's called the dragon airy. It's two parts. It's like the dragon airy and the dragon is a dragon monastery. I don't fucking know. Clearly, I know this game super super well as I should. 
being the uh, souls expert that I am. It is Dragonary. I knew I knew this was Dragonary, but I don't know what the place after is called. Dragon Monastery? That doesn't sound right. Anyway, go down here. Yet again, another safety strat. You do not need to grab this bonfire coming up, but I decide to grab it because we're going to do a skip here that... I wouldn't say it's easy to die on if you've practiced it, but if you do and I died, I would be all the way back at the Ruin Fork Road bonfire, which obviously would end my run, so I take the five second time loss to grab the bonfire. And just uh, run past that guy, like kite to the left and then run to the right. I'm gonna cut through here, go to these eggs, crush them, fuck them, fuck Guardian Dragon <laughs> and his eggs. I guess those are his eggs, I don't know. There's more Guardian Dragons in this level. And then we're going to do Dragonary Skip up here, which you do by turn to the left, kind of line yourself up with the rope here. Then you're going to want to shoot. I kind of panicked here. You want to see, you see that harsh line. You want to shoot right above it, backstep, then jump. You want to backstep because you want to make sure you have enough stamina to, or you want to make sure you get a little run up so you can get the long jump. I actually haven't mentioned this to this point, and this is a good time to do it because we're running across the bridge and this next part's pretty easy. Um... Hold on, I want to see what it's called. What the fuck is it? Dragon Shrine, Jesus Christ. All right, anyway. <laughs> uh, the speedrunning community for this game actually decided to allow a mod that removes what are called baby jumps from the game. Essentially, if your game... I think it has to do with CPU usage on PC, but essentially, you never get hit by that guy. I don't know why the fuck I got hit. Um, hopefully, this guy gives you a charge attack and get past it. Baby jumps essentially just... Sometimes in this game, you'll get shorter jumps. And as you've seen across this... There are many jumps, and if you got baby jumps, sometimes you just die. So there's a mod that removes them from the game on PC, which is nice. That has never happened in a run. There is a strat here where you run diagonal to here, and you'll always be safe going here. You just immediately turn the corner and then run a diagonal to that spot, and you'll always be able to get through that door because it kites them in a weird way. But I wish I could have shown it because it's such a cool uh, little piece of tech that allows you to get through that door without ever getting hit. Which is nice, because it's one of the few doors you have to like pull the opposite way, which makes it longer. So you can't roll through halfway. Um, but this was scary. I never really get hit here. And these guys are just all over my fucking ass. And I'm like, does the game know? Does it know I'm on like a decent run here? Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> anyway, same deal with the souls here. If you press uh, to talk, if you press A or X to talk and then immediately press square, you can use the dark sign and then run through the dialogue to get the Ash and Mist Heart. It's a little close, but it's not that close. Just mash X or A afterward and you're good. And now we're going to travel to Cardinal Tower because we are pretty much at the end of the run. We only have three bosses left, being Giant Lord, Throne Watcher, and Defender, and Nishandra. So we're, we're pretty much at the end here. So we're going to do Giant Lord Skip, which is a little weird. You're going to turn around here, try to line your feet up with those stones there. Then we're going to point, backstep immediately after pointing. Want to line up an arrow with that little branch thing there, backstep, and jump. As I said, a baby jump would kill you there, but instead you get perfect red tier stone ring setup. But yet again, I decided to be a coward. I should have ran straight into the memory. I should have ran straight in, but I don't. I grab the bonfire to be safe in case I die to him because I wanted to secure the PB. Because as you're going to see here, if you notice, my leap of faith skip is uh, 102. 41. And I'm at 56 minutes. And if you know this game, you know Giant Lord isn't very far away. That's because Giant Lord killed me three times in my PB. And that is because I did not know how to dodge a certain attack. And obviously here if I get hit once I'm dead. <laughs> so uh, I, ha I practiced afterward because I was like, okay, I can't let this happen. I figured it out. Anyway, you want to run through immediately so you don't get hit by any of the mortars. You want to use the resin right there. And we're going to run forward to him. It's just a matter of fighting Giant Lord. But I will tell you here... That attack right there, if you hug the outside of his left foot very closely, you'll never get hit by that attack. That's what I learned. That attack kept killing me. Um, so I try, you'll see that, I, or notice, that I try to stay on the side of that left foot so that I'm ready for it. But he actually gives me stomps here, which are amazing because you can get tons of hits in. But you'll see here, I run to that left foot and then I'm safe. As with Giant Lord, you want to immediately use your Dark Sign here because you need the souls from Giant Lord. And normally, if you didn't grab the other bonfire, you'd go back to Cardinal Tower, which is where you need to go. But because I grabbed the other bonfire, I'm going to lose a little bit more time here because I need to warp to Cardinal Tower. And I didn't get to use the Dark Sign, which also wasted probably 5 to 10 seconds as well. The reason you do it is because just like with Giant, uh, the last Giant in the beginning of the game, you need the souls here. 
So if you use the dark sign immediately, you'd have them because you need to buy bright bugs here because you don't have any left and you need one for the final fight. So now we're going to travel to King's Gate and then this is going to be the last little bit right here. I was pretty sad at this part because I saw my time and I knew it takes like a minute to run down to them. So I was like, I'm going to, I knew I was going to be close. So I was like, <laughs> I know I'm not, I'm not going to get the sub one hour, but I'm like, I know I'm close. Uh, anyway, you run down here. I'm making sure I have everything on here. Everything is right. You definitely want everything set up the way I have there. But I thankfully I remember to put the bright bugs on in slot six. I like to have them before the resin. So slot six is the nice spot for them. So what we're going to do here is you're going to run to the right side. And then we're going to jump off right at the end, do a big jump, and we're going to lose a little bit of HP. You'll see why it has to do with the strategy we're going to do for Throne Watcher and Defender, um, it, which is very, 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 very useful. Throne Watcher and Defender are honestly pretty scary. They do a ton of damage to you when you're in the nude, um, which is why we're not going to be totally in the nude for the first time ever in the run here since the beginning, <laughs> uh, because they, they do a lot of damage to you. It's, it's pretty absurd how much damage they do. So... Just run all the way down, managing your stamina as before. And then when we get down to the bottom, we are going to use a bright bug. We are going to use the resin. But before we do that, we're going to put on the bandit boots. Like I said, we're not going to be totally naked. We're at least having the decency to put on some goddamn pants or shorts. I don't know why the bandit... <laughs> I don't know why the bandits have shorts with those little nice like flowery boots, but whatever. Anyway, you want the old Radiant Life gem on, and you're going to immediately run to the right and smash that gem. Smash that shit. And then you're going to want to move to him and just start attacking. If you're a little bit far away from him when you begin your attack, it'll go right over your head and you'll be good. You have to be reactionary here based on what happens. Because she attacks me, I decide to run away and use my Estus. The whole purpose of using the old Radiant Life gem there is so that you can tank attacks. But if you take too much damage, you need to use your Estus. So the, the goal is to kill Throne Watcher as fast as possible. I got a really nice fight from Watcher there. I didn't get hit by his first attack. I was able to get a lot of damage. Then as he was switching his weapons, I was able to get in and get the last little bit of hits on him, hits on him and get Watcher. This was fucking terrifying. So Watcher, when she runs like that, normally is running to Defender to resurrect him, which, is, which means you win. You do enough damage that you can just instantly get her right there. But she fucking decides to stop it attack me one hits if she had hit me with that other attack it would have killed me and her attacks have really wide range and i have low adp so fuck anyway use resin again heal up go over to her you're supposed to running r1 and hit three times i only hit two because i was scared <laughs> i think i think you're supposed to hit four times anyway the whole point here is run away, use life gems to make sure you're healing, and then you want to kite the laser, run in, running R1 in two hits, run away, and you want to kite the laser again. If she moves towards you, you want to do this, move toward her close enough that she'll start doing melee attacks. And then I'm just going to do the same thing again. Use life gem from far away, kite the laser, run in, R1, 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 and then I want to run away. The reason I want to run away is it's a safety strat. You don't want to deal with her melee. If you get hit by any of her attacks, you're going to die. You obviously don't want to die here. The run-up's really a really long way back. So if you run away the fourth time, you'll be able to come in, do four R1s, and then easy peasy, you win. You win Dark Souls 2. You get to seat that throne because Aldia is not here because you did not do any of his shit. <laughs> Thankfully, I would not want to fight Aldia at the end of this run, quite frankly, at this level of HP. That would be quite troublesome. So the run ends the moment the black screen hits, and then it's over. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, actually, is that this run runs on RTA no load, which I know sounds weird uh, for anyone who is not familiar with speedrunning. So if you've seen some of my past speedruns, they run on in-game time, which would be the time that, like, if I were to quit here and load my file, I would see my in-game time. But there's a couple of things uh, that make you not use in-game time on PC. One of them being, uh, first of all, at this screen, I, I think this is less of a factor, but here, this actually counts to your in-game time, these credits. So normally you would want to Alt F4 out uh, to exit the game. But even aside from that, apparently game time is tied to your frame rate, as I understand it in this game. So if you lose frames at any point, it affects your time. So one of the people on PC made something that allows you to just remove the load screens from the game. So as you were going throughout the run, you might have noticed that my timer stops during the load screens. Uh, it's basically the same thing as in-game time, it's just more accurate. 
it's pretty easy if you have live split all you have to do is hit enable when you choose dark souls 2 any percent and it'll enable the rta no load it's it's very very simple but yeah this run i i i really i i feel bad i've been i've been talking about it the whole time i, I was i was pretty disappointed i didn't get the sub one hour i i practiced this run i've been doing it for about a month uh on and off on twitch and i really wanted to be able to get the sub one hour half for that nice little title of how to be dark souls 2 in under an hour but whenever i speed run i set goals for myself the world record for this run is about 51 minutes i think it's a little bit under 51 minutes and i didn't want to run to the point where i was getting that good but i was like you know nine minutes off the record is pretty fair i feel so it's for just running casually for a little while so i really wanted to get that sub one hour if i hadn't died to mirror night if i hadn't done those safety strats i think that i would have been able to pull that off um but unfortunately that just wasn't what was in the cards speed running very much like i said is a game of repetition you just need to do it again and again and again and depending on the run sometimes it's really fun other times it can be really frustrating i apologize for the credits flashing here i don't know why this happens but for some reason on my pc they start flashing so i <laughs> i cut uh the video there i'll just freeze it for you um as i as i finish talking but yeah as far as doing this run i definitely recommend this run i just encourage you to stick with it if you really want to try it because for me at least the first couple of splits were very frustrating there were things that were just very very minor that i could die to and because you can't lose the souls and it, it's so specific in the beginning you can't afford to die that's is really what it boils down to but there are a lot of safety strats you can do you can grab extra bonfires you can get souls from extra areas my first run that i completed i think was like four hours long <laughs> or something like that i don't know it was really really long and that's because it doesn't matter it's all practice it's all practice repetition and being able uh and willing to do that stuff as for my next speed run i don't know what i want to do quite yet i as far as the souls games at this point i've speed run bloodborne i've done sekiro i've done dark souls 3 i've now done dark souls 2 i've done dark souls 1 which i guess leaves the door open as the only game i haven't done being demon souls the reason i haven't speed run demon souls yet is consoles are a bit annoying to record from for me i like prefer recording from my pc uh so i haven't done demon souls yet though I, I probably should i probably would like to i also did consider doing ds2 all bosses but as you can imagine after experiencing a little bit of frustration with this run which is only about an hour the dark souls 2 run would probably be closer to the two hour 30 minute mark for me thanks to how big the game is but it might be something i take on in the future I think for right now I'm gonna I'm gonna casually like chill and play Code Vein a little bit because I have to say I I know this isn't a Code Vein video but I am enjoying the hell out of that game I'm pretty like now I, since I have a free platform to talk about it for a second I'm pretty blown away at the reviews I can't believe that people are calling that a seven out of ten game which in this day and age weirdly is like that's average or even bad by a lot of people's standards like if it's not eight out of ten it's not good if it's not nine out of ten it's not great and if it's not a masterpiece if it's not ten out of ten which I guess is fair but I love that game I there's so many builds there's so many different things to try the build I did was like a halberd build and from what I've been seeing from other people's streams and shit it looks like strength builds are amazing um I don't know I want to play the shit out of that game and I hope I can speed run it too that'd be really fun to do but uh, I'll stop rambling here I'm sorry that I'm I'm babbling on um I just like talking to you guys I I don't get a chance to unscripted just kind of chat with you guys on YouTube very often so I enjoy doing these a lot I hope you guys enjoy these speedrun tutorials too um, but yeah, good luck if you try this run. And of course, I want to thank you guys for watching today. Much love to you. And I will see you in the next video.